He's like, well, say, well, well, I'm just talking to you, isn't it? I'm saying, what do you want to be, a Muslim or what, mate? I want to be a Muslim. What sort of Muslim do you want to be? I want to be a tall one. Tall one? What? Get out of here. You crazy? You nuts being a lunatic. My name's Gary Busby, but it's changed to Suleiman 15 years ago when I embraced Islam. I'm nearly 60 years old now. Um, I come from London, the East End of London, Hackney, which makes me a, a Cockney. You know, that's a, a real thing. People will say they are. I actually am, uh, if you couldn't tell already. Like a lot of uh, regular English guys, you might say, I would have said if there was a box to tick on a form, what's your religion? You would tick that box, Christian. And then someone would say, okay, when did you last read the Bible? And you'd say, oh, uh, I don't remember reading it at all, you know, or maybe I did at school. So, you know, the Lord's Prayer, and maybe you went to church for somebody's wedding or a funeral, and that's about all you know. And that's what most Christians are in the UK, the majority so-called Christians. So I was one of those. I arrived in Bahrain in the 1st of June 1984, which was also the 1st of Ramadan. So one of my first experiences was to see people fasting. But the first thing I really noticed was to hear the call to prayer coming from a nearby mosque. I heard this voice singing out over the streets, and I heard another one. It was like in a cannon. You could hear stereophonic sound as they were picking up. And I asked somebody, what's that guy saying? Actually, the guy I asked didn't know. But after some couple of tries, I found somebody that told me what the guy is saying. I said, oh, that's interesting. That's a very straightforward thing to say. It's not some, something sort of weird and poetic. It's just a straightforward, you know, come to the prayer. You know, that's what it's saying. Hmm, interesting. Okay, never mind. I didn't give it too much more thought, but I was working with Muslims. They were fasting in that first month. And they could see I was interested. So they started to give me answers to simple questions. You know, so you pray. How often do you pray? What do you say when you pray? Oh, okay. I can't say I was overly excited about that. I just thought, that's interesting. It's something different. Jump forward many years. I was in Turkey in the mid-90s. And there I saw something else. There I saw a country full of Muslims living in a secular state. I realized particularly during the Ramadans in Turkey, Ramazan as they call it there, the people who were fasting and the people who were not fasting, they're coexisting because there was no prohibitions there on the opening of cafes and drinking and the street smoking, whatever. So you saw people choosing their fast rather than it being an overall cultural blanket. That's when I perceived something more. I started to notice there was a link between the people who I'd got to know and like and the ones who were fasting. It was a straight positive correlation, as a statistician would say. You know, this is a, uh, significant at the 95% level, you know. And I joined in. I just did that spontaneous thing. I said, I'm going to try this. What do you exactly do you have to do? Dawn to dusk? Yeah, yeah, okay, fine. It's not just a question of ignoring a few cups of tea. Immediately I found it tough and immediately, oh, respect. You know, this is not easy. You have to want to do this. And it it during that time, somebody saw that I was interested and they gave me my first Quran. Jumping ahead, I came back to Dubai. My boss uh, at work, uh, Emirati gentleman, had been talking to me about a project that had been introduced to him by some guys he'd met. So we went for dinner with these guys and we sat down to have dinner. And my boss uh, introduced me with a master stroke. He said, meet uh, this Gary Busby, he works for me. He's uh, the worst sort of kafir. And I was shocked. I'm like, what? You know, this is like an insult, you know. What do you mean by that? I knew he meant, yeah, he grinned on his face when he said it, but even so, it was sort of a strong statement. And he said, the trouble with him is he's read Quran, he's studied the life of the Prophet ﷺ, he knows quite a lot about Islam, he's asked me a lot of questions about it, and he still doesn't want to embrace. He says, well, chance to solve it. Ask the guys these questions you've been asking me. So I started asking them, and that was like 7 p.m., and... 8 p.m. came and went, and so did 9, 10, 11, and 12. And at 12 o'clock, they threw us out the restaurant, and we stood in the street. We stood in the street for another half an hour, and I kept asking my questions. And it was somewhere between midnight and 1 a.m. We're standing in the street here in Gahud in Dubai, and it, I guess it went quiet. And one of the guys said to me, so, have we answered all your questions? And I said, yeah, I guess you have. And he said, well, then, why don't you just take the step you need to step, take, step across that bridge and uh, do what you need to do. And that's what I did. That was on a Tuesday night, I think. And on that Friday, 
I embraced Islam in a mosque in Dubai. One of my biggest concerns around the time that I embraced Islam, immediately before and still immediately afterwards, was that I felt I might be getting into something that was too prescriptive. You know, that I might find that this new way of life was going to be like a straitjacket and it was going to tell me too much, restrict me too much, uh, give me no options, no choice, lose freedom of choice. That turned out to be true and not true at the same time in a very happy way because yes it does tell you what to do but it tells you in the way that your father tells you what to do if he's a good father. He's giving you the best advice. You can still choose what you take of it and how you do it. You know, it's up to you. You're still a human being. But now you know you're being given good advice. And that's very comforting, isn't it? I'd actually found the formula. This was the way to fix myself. You know, follow what it says in the Quran. And it was like having the most wise dad in the world who was always hanging around near you to tell you stuff. Ah, don't do that. You know? And I thought, wow, this is amazing. Everything. It's going to sound obvious, but just don't be scared. Uh, this isn't as exciting as jumping out of an aeroplane. I've done that too, and uh, that was a lot more stupid. This was the smart one. So just do it. Trust me, it's going to be fine.